Hello there. This is Being God's Obedient Servant channel. And today's lesson, we're doing Psalms 108 through 110. And if you're new to this, you just click on this. This is the Bible study channel. I go through the King James Bible from beginning to end. And I don't skip anything because that's what God commands. God says if you're a preacher of the word, you are uh, to teach all of the word. So I guess that falls under people also doing Bible studies and teachings as well. So I don't know if I kind of added to the Word of God on that, but you know I always say if you're a preacher or teacher of the Word, because a preacher is a different position than just, uh, I guess, a Bible study teacher, but I guess in a sense it still falls in the category of preacher a little bit, because I don't have a flock except the uh, people that follow, which, you know, the responsibility of a preacher is also to tend to the flock. So it's normally people, local, and everything. It's people you go to and help as need be and everything. Where if someone's watching this and I'm in Tennessee and they're in Montana, it's not really going to happen. But, you know, you got the idea. But, yeah, I don't skip any part of the Bible. That's what God commands. Same thing as... Uh, if you, you know, if you're to teach all of the word, that also means you're to learn all of the word. And I've got some good stuff to learn tonight. Um, it's, uh, like I said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great uh, depiction of things that have changed between Old Testament and New Testament. And of course, you know, I like to always talk about, you know, which parts of the Old Testament still stand today and which parts don't. And we're going to be having some of that today. Um, two of these, 8 and 9, are Psalms of David. The Psalm 110, it doesn't, uh, I couldn't really find who wrote it, but... It's, uh, um, oh, scratch that. I'm sorry. That's 111. I couldn't find anything. All of these are Psalms of David. <laughs> Had to correct myself there a little bit. It's like, oops, messed up. But it is what it is. One of my favorite sayings. But like I normally try to do is keep these, uh, teachings around 30 minutes I think a lot of people they don't really want to uh, you know have videos too long I know most people today they like short videos but Bible teachings can't be short videos you can't just skip parts and say you know here's the the main meaning of this and we're just going to highlight some important parts no, we, you're not supposed to skip any of it that's why some teachings or whatever is going to be uh, going to have some time to it. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right on in here and get started. Uh, 108 verse 1. Oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Now, of course, we know that still stands today because we're to give God the glory of everything. We're to give him thanks in everything. Um, so, the kind of difference is, you know, we're commanded to give thanks to everything, even bad things. Even if bad comes into your life, you're still to give thanks to the Lord. So it is a little different then. Um, because it's kind of like most of here, it's like when good's happened in my life, give God, you know, glory to the Lord. But it never really talks about the bad parts at times. You know, they always say, well, bad things are happening. Why are you, you know, God, why are you upset with me? And that's why Old Testament kind of teaches, but New Testament teaches differently. So there is a difference there. Let's continue on verse 2. Awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. 
and I will pr sing praises unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great above the heavens, and thy truth reacheth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens, and thy glory above all the earth, that thy beloved may be delivered. Save with thy right hand, and answer me. God hath spoken in his holiness, I will rejoice. I will divide Shechem and meat out of the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine, Manasseh is mine, Ephraim also is the strength of mine head. Judah is my lawgiver. Of course, you're talking about towns here. But if you didn't really get that, if you're new to this and stuff, you didn't really know these are towns. If you've been following along, you remember, I have remember these names. But verse 9. Mo Moab is my wash pot. Over Edom will I cast out my shoe. Over uh, Phil Philistia will I triumph. Who will bring me into the strong city? Who will lead me into Edom? Wilt not thou, O God, who has cast us off? And wilt not thou, O God, go forth with our hosts? Give us help from trouble, for vain is the help of man. Through God we shall do valiantly, for he it is that shall tread down our enemies. Of course, there's a difference in New Testament and Old Testament. Um, now, we are to want God to fight our battles for us. But he doesn't really do that trotting down the enemies. He, and today with Jesus, he wants us to change the hearts, work on changing the hearts of people that come against us. And in the 109, you're going to hear a lot about this. And you're going to see there's a clearly a difference between Old Testament and New Testament here. Because after remember what Jesus says, you know, turn the other cheek. And what that means is if somebody disrespects you, you give them the other cheek and says, okay, smack that one too. I ain't talking about somebody beating you causing you physical harm it's it's with disrespect is what that's talking about it's kind of like the old french thing where they took the glove off and smacked you across the face with and say i challenge you to a deal type thing that's the disrespect is a little the little you know flick of the wrist thing have that song that little song go a little flick of the wrist but you know that's kind of showing disrespect that's what that's meaning where in Old Testament, well, I said, let's go ahead and jump right on to 109 and you will know right away the air, when we get to that area I was talking about. So 109 verse 1. Hold not thy peace, O God, of my praise. For the mouth of the wicked and the mouth of the deceitful are opened against me. They have spoken against me with a lying tongue. They compass me about also with words of hatred and fault against me without a cause. Here we go. Speaking straight into this, you know, they're spo you're speaking against me. They're lying about me, blah, blah, blah. They're disrespecting me. They're dishonoring me. You know, they may be even talking ill about God. And Old Testament, New Testament is different because, of course, here it's the same thing, you know. Well, let's continue on. You'll, you'll see where Jesus would say, no, we're not doing it no more. Verse 4. For my love, they are my adversaries, but I give myself unto prayer. And they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Set thou a wicked man over him and let Satan stand at his right hand. See, that is what we're not under no more. You know, we're not supposed, we're supposed to love our enemies, even. We're not supposed to wish them harm. We don't want Satan in anybody's life. We want Satan out of everybody's life. 
That's what Jesus teaches, you know. But, you know, when somebody does you wrong, of course, we want instant justice. And we want karma. So we want bad things to happen to those who do bad to others. Now, remember, there's a difference between being sinful and being wicked. Wicked is when you are causing harm to other people. Being sinful means you're just not following God's rules. But you're, you know... You're a little deceitful, a little manipulative stuff, but you're not actually causing harm and robbing people and stuff like that and physically hurting people and, you know, stuff of that nature. But, you know, there's 31 verses in this, but it's kind of like I said, it, it speaks in the same, the same flow of this psalm is speaking in the same way. And anything that now... Like in Old Testament, they call for bad things to happen to our enemies and blah, blah, blah. We're not that no more. Jesus is not, not, we're not, he says we're not doing that no more. That's changed. We're now to live with love. It says, but always remember, we are allowed to protect ourselves. And if you're a man, you're commanded to protect your family. That has never changed. Jesus didn't change it. God didn't, you know, hasn't, none of that, you know, that's been set that the man is the provider, protector, educator, and leader of the family. That has never changed. It says, but, you know, if people are just going to be wroth with you or disrespectful and stuff like that, you're supposed to turn the other cheek and just walk away. It says, whatever. As long as you know the truth of who you are and God knows the truth of who you are, what people think of you is irrelevant. That's how we live, supposed to live today as Christians. Let's continue on here. Verse 7. When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Now, see, this is clearly nothing like that. Because we're supposed to be the judge, not for ye will be judged. So what we want to happen to other people may happen to us. That's what that's meaning by Jesus. It says, all, all that's changed. And that, you know, anything about hatred or wanting evil to happen to your enemies, stuff like that, you know. No, we're, we're, we want their hearts to change. And that can only happen as if they come to the Lord. As long as they're in the world, their hearts can't be changed. And we're supposed to want them to come to God and to go to heaven with us, to become a brother and sister in the Lord, not for anyone to go to hell. And the main difference between this is, in Old Testament, it was the Israelites against the world. But see, now all can come to the Lord. The Samaritans, the heathens, you know, the circumcised, the uncircumcised, oh, anybody and everybody can now come to the Lord. And of course, the Holy Spirit changes you, so you're no longer a heathen and stuff of that nature. Being circumcised is irrelevant anymore. That all's changed. So that's that's the, the difference here. So here, this is primarily, you know, for you know, for the Israelites for this because they, they, the whole world was coming against them which is going to happen again and it's already happening you got more and more nations now wanting to side with the murderers from the Gaza Strip and you know saying death to Israel and that's what they're chanting from the river to the sea, this, that, and the other. So God says, no, that's their land. I gave it to them. If you don't like them, leave their land, is what God tells everyone else. Like, you don't like them, leave. He says, but you are not, we're not, God's not going to allow anyone to take Israel away again. God let it happen as a punishment because the Israelites went against God again, and it was a punishment. And, of course, after World War II, it changed. They were punished enough and became a nation within a day. And God says he's not going to allow that to happen again. But anyway, let's continue on here. Verse 7. When he shall be judged, let him... I'm sorry, I already read that. I'm going to read it again. 
When he shall be judged, let him be condemned, and let his prayer become sin. Let his days be few, and let another take his office. Let his children be fatherless, and his wife a widow. You know, that's, that's asking for death. That we're not to do. Not anymore. Now, I ain't going to lie. I've wished this myself with a lot of these really evil people that are bringing such mayhem and harm to the world. I was says, Lord, just get rid of them. And it's like, but of course, we're to, we, we were once wrong in the eyes of God too. So we have to remember that. That's why we're to be we're under grace today. You just don't let those people affect your life as little as possible. Let God handle them. You know, you just pray to God to help you in your storm. Let's continue on verse 10. Let his children be continually vagabonds and beg. Let them seek their bread also out of their desolate places. Now, see, this is now wishing bad to happen to the person's children. You know, you have to wonder, really, what was going on in the mind of King David at this time to wish so much bad upon certain people. But they were also brought in as a tool of judgment to kill the Canaanites who were passing children through fire, you know, murdering their own children, worshiping a false god. And they did that for over 400 years. And God says, okay, I've sent many people trying to get you to stop. You won't stop. Now judgment's coming on you. But, of course, New Testament, everything's a little different. But our rules for humanity is still the same except things have been added to it and one is being more graceful instead of you know what this is but let's continue on verse 11 let the extortioner catch all that he hath and let the stranger spoil his labor now this you know this is what we deal with a lot today too extortioners it's like you know here in america and many other countries. If you don't pay taxes, they throw you in jail. That's extortion. So our governments are extortioners. And there's nothing wrong with praying that, hey, get them out of these positions. Let them positions don't exist because they're common causing harm. Now, you don't wish death upon them or curses or this, that, and the other or, you know, bad things to happen to their families. But, you know, it was okay to pray that they are, you know, mostly what most of us pray is that those offices don't even exist to allow this to happen. But let's continue on verse 12. Let there be none to extend mercy unto him. Let's see. Yeah, that's, that's not today. <laughs> that's not New Testament. Neither let there be any to favor his fatherless children. Yeah, well, we're not. That's not today either. Verse thirteen: Let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with the Lord, and let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be before the Lord continually, that may be cut off the memory of them from the earth. Now, of course, in that verse 14 says, let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. That's even calling for his mother to go to hell. Because if, if your sins haven't been blotted out, you know, haven't been forgiven, you go to hell. That's calling upon the mother of the person that he's, that's doing, you know, being mean to him. Yeah. That's uh, these are these are type of things. This is where I try to always tell people it's like just because it's in the Bible, you have to remember. Just because it's in, in the in the gospel, 
it's a teaching aid. We're to know by reading all the Bible which part stands, which parts don't, and which is wrong and which is right. Now, in the time of this, King David was still part of that judgment over the Canaanites and the uh, Philistines and stuff of that nature. In you know that they were supposed to clear clear out all of the land that way because the land's supposed to be theirs. And so this was okay in its time, but not not anymore. Verse sixteen. Because that he remembered not to show mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy man, that he might even slay the broken in heart. As he loved cursing, so let it come unto him. As he delighted not in blessing, so let it be far from him. Now, we're not to call for stuff like that. We want the Lord to change people's hearts. But this is, it's always been a sin for someone to not show mercy. For someone to persecute poor and needy people and not have any mercy on the people that are in, you know, that, that's broken hearted. It's always been a sin, Old and New Testament. So that sin still stands. That's still wrong to do. But remember, we're to turn the other cheek today continue on here yeah, 18 as he clothed himself with cursing like as with his garment so let it come into his bowels like water and like oil into his bones let it be unto him as the garment which covereth him and for a girdle wherewith he is girded continually let this be the reward of mine adversaries from the lord and of them that speak evil against my soul. But do thou for me, O God, the Lord, for thy name's sake, because thou, thy mercy is good, deliver thou me. So, once again, I'll also, verse 22, finish that. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. Now, once again, I don't know about this poor and needy part because King David is King David. You know, he had gold galore and this, that, and the other. I don't know where that... I don't really know where that part's coming from there. There must be something in the translation a little bit different. He might be talking about, you know, in spirit, he may be poor and needy in spirit. You know, his heart's troubled. I can see that. But here he is asking God, like we all do, we ask God to bless us. But we can't ask God today in New Testament. We cannot ask God to bless us and curse other people. You know, because that's wrong for us to ask. You know, we're not supposed to ask good for ourselves and bad for other people. That's a sin on its own today. But as I said, in this time with King David, there was different rules then. They were under the law, which if you sinned against God, you were stoned to death. Now you sin against God, you're not stoned to death. You're to be, you're to be given grace. Now, if you sin against a man and you get stoned to death for it, that's different because sinning against a man normally means you're robbing them, hurting them, stuff like that. People are allowed to defend themselves and their property and whatnot. But let's continue on here. Right, even today, New Testament, we're, you're still called to defend ourselves and our families and stuff of that nature. But also remember, there is a slight change in that. Like... Um, you know, Jesus says, if someone steals from you, do not ask for it back. Let them have it. Now, for a lot of people, that's very hard. Like, say, you don't have much food. 
and you know someone's trying to take everything that you have and put you out in the cold with no food or shelter this that and the other you know you got small children or whatever that's something, I don't know, that's something we'd have to pray about there. Because I, I think it's a different category. I think that's mostly meaning like, hey, someone took my garment. Someone took my walking stick. You know, I have, you know, 20 sheep and somebody took one. I think that's more of what that's meaning there. Because then it's like, okay, well, they, they, somebody took it from me. I know who has it, whatever. I guess they can have it. Because then God says, if you, Jesus says, if you live that way, he'll make sure you have more than what was taken from you. So that's the teaching of that. But let's continue on here. Verse 23. I am gone like the shadow when it declineth. I am tossed up and down as the locust. My knees are weak through fasting and my flesh faileth of fatness. I became also a reproach unto them. When they looked upon me, they sh shaked their heads. Help me, O Lord my God, O save me according to thy mercy, that they may know that this is thy hand, that thou, Lord, hast done it. Let them curse, but bless thou. So, now we don't under really stand it says thou, says me. It says, you know, let them curse me, but asking for God to bless me. So, that's what that's meaning there. When they arise, let them be ashamed, but let thy servant rejoice. Now that we can ask for, people just start having a conscience again. You know, to be ashamed of what they're doing wrong. That we can pray for. It says, hey, Lord, please put it on the hearts of these people doing wrong. You know, remember, we've got to ask in Jesus' name. It says, dear Lord Jesus, let these people that are doing wrong, let their conscience overwhelm them for being wrong and wicked. In the name of Jesus, I pray these things. Amen. And that's, you know, I just said a prayer. We can pray that. Because that's going to help change their heart and them turn towards good instead of bad. But Verse 29. Let mine adversaries be clothed with shame and let them cover themselves with their own confusion as with a mantle. I will greatly praise the Lord with my mouth. Yea, I will praise him among the multitude for he shall stand at the right hand of the poor to save him from those that condemn his soul. I said there's a lot in there that we're not under no more. And this is why you got so many people says, thank goodness that we're under grace today instead of the law. Because it's, uh, well, there was a lot of brutal times during that time. And there was no real governments. It was just whoever could take over someone else is the one that ruled. So whoever had the most people with the biggest, baddest weapons, they normally ruled the world. Even the time of Jesus walking the earth, Rome ruled over Israel. Let's continue on here. Uh, Psalms 110. It's pretty straightforward. We're right here at the, almost the 30 minute mark. So there's only seven verses. That's why I added this in here. So let's go ahead and read through this. Another Psalm of David. The Lord said unto my, the Lord said unto my Lord. That's a little confusing there, but sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Now, once again, this is during the law and King David stuff, the Israelites at the time, they're the tool of judgment against the wicked of the land. Uh, verse 2. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. 
Rule thou in the, mid, uh, in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord hath sworn and wilt not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of um, Melchizedek. Melchizedek, Melchizedek. I have a hard time saying that name. I hear it's being said, but I have a hard time repeating <laughs> how it's said. I think it's Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Uh, Got to say it's slower. Verse 5. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head. Of course, the last part's there. You know, so wherever God is consuming that, that's the area that's to be lifted up. Uh, to be lifted up. Those are the people that should be lifted up and the rest should fall. And I said, because we have to remember that in Old Testament times, whoever was the strongest country, because there were so many different false gods that no one, a lot of people didn't know who the real God was. So whoever was the strongest and the mightiest was the one that they believed their God was real. You know, or the most powerful one because they believed in so many different false gods. So this is, you know, one of the reasons why God says, I mean, it's like the, the, God blessing the Israelites to win and all these places and stuff, it reached miles and miles and miles ahead of them before they even got there. People said the Israelites are coming. And some, like, you know, you had the uh, harlot that was in the one city saying, yes, well, you know, she knew of God. She knew God was strong and powerful and that he was blessing the people. And she hid two, their, two of their spies and says, you know, before you, you know, when you come take the city, just keep keep me and my family safe. And he says, you know, put uh, put the the scarlet fabric, you know, in in your window, so we know which which room is yours, and have you and everybody you want to keep safe in that room. Anyone else in the city is going to be destroyed. And that was a promise that they made to the harlot, the prostitute, that lied to protect the. Uh, the two spies that were spying out the land. You know, so it said she already knew of their of God's greatness and the blessings that he was bringing upon the Israelites before they even reached the city. She knew that they were coming. And so her and her family were safe. And if you don't remember me talking about that, if you follow that bloodline down, um, King David came from that bloodline which means Jesus came from that bloodline of that prostitute you know even though she lived wickedly what she did was wicked in the eyes of the Lord she still you know she knew of God and so this is the whole, this is a thing that a lot of people got to understand like some people are in situations and they can't really get out of. And some people, out of bad choices, put themselves in those situations. This is why, you know, we're to know a tree by the fruit it bears. But also we know that there's some people that are in strongholds. Some things that are in their lives that shouldn't be in their lives, but you can't really get rid of them. And it's a battle that they deal with. And I'm pretty sure this woman that's, you know, she clearly, she was forgiven. 
she quit being a harlot. She did take uh, a husband. She became the wife of an Israelite. You know. And, you know, it's a... Uh, so, this is also a teaching that anybody can be forgiven. And that's how we're to live our lives. That's why we turn the other cheek. And we're not to unjustly judge. We're to remember that someone's heart is more important than their situation. But that is the last uh, psalm for tonight. We're just at the 35 minute mark, a little over that. And so I said, we went through a lot of good stuff here. And so we got to see, you know, the differences, a lot of the differences between the Old and New Testament. And so I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I'm going to end this lesson here. So remember to pray. And remember how Jesus says we're to pray, we're to give him the glory. But if we really want him to answer the prayer, we must pray it in his name. Just like I did that other little prayer about, you know, the extortioners and the wicked people and the ones causing harm. To me. It's like, you know, I don't wish them to go to hell. I don't want God to send them there either. Now, unless their heart changes and they get right with God, that's the pathway of all that's on the earth. Without the Holy Spirit, no one gets in. None may come to the Father but by me. It's a commandment from Christ. But you gotta remember, Jesus says, All that is asked in my name's sake will be given to thee. But also, it has to be within the will of the Lord. We know that from teaching as well. So you can't just say, Jesus, give me a Maserati. Jesus, give me a mansion. No, those are worldly things. Jesus will never grant that one because that's that's in wickedness that's wicked thoughts right there that's vanity and materialism jesus is against that stuff but uh starting to go on another little teaching thing there but yeah we got to remember to pray we still got a lot of people in Asheville and east tennessee area where a lot of the flooding was and mudslides got a lot of people you know, not just in those areas, but everybody affected from Hurricane Helene. And then all of a sudden you had that other hurricane. Thank God he knocked it down a few notches from Category 5. I think by the time it hit landfall, it was Category 2. Um, so you had Lieutenant Dan. I saw a little videos about that guy. You know, uh, got people helping him out. It's really sad you got somebody living with missing a leg and he's having to live the way that he lives. You clearly see he doesn't have teeth, missing a leg, gets around on crutches, doesn't have you know vehicles, this, that, and the other. No real way to get around and stuff. And he just bought uh, a used-up sailboat that still floats and that's what he lives in. I'm glad people are helping him out and stuff. And... That guy's got a lot of faith in uh, in God, too. He's still a good man. But look at all this uh, so-called welfare systems and uh, disability system, everything we have. Look how it's failing the people. That's from these, these extortioners today. So remember that when you're going to vote, you know, come November. Remember that, that it doesn't matter which state you're in, all these people says if you don't give us part of your money we're sending you to jail if you don't pay your property taxes we're taking what you have I don't care what state you're in they're all extortioners and we gotta pray that they're that they uh, be ashamed and we gotta pray that their conscience comes back on them tenfold to make them realize the wickedness that they're doing that way they can turn from the wickedness. A lot of people do a lot of wicked things and they think they're good to go in the eyes of God because they're not being punished. So we need uh, we need shame, you know them to be ashamed. We need a, their conscience to come back into their life. You know, be very powerful, make them feel miserable for the wrong that they're doing. 
So that we can pray for. In Jesus' name, I pray that too. And, but yeah, we got to pray for people from Florida all the way up. And people like Lieutenant Dan. I can't remember the guy's real name, but you know who I'm talking about if you've been watching any of the videos. But yeah, so we, we just, we got to pray. It's, uh, it's one of our greatest tools. Other than love, it's one of our greatest tools that we have to communicate with the Lord. But, I said I'm ending this lesson here. So, until next time, God bless, good night, and goodbye.